the Swiss Canal, spanning the 193 km, is a remarkable sea route that the continent, both side and Swiss in Egypt. With a rich history and iconic engineering, it has transformed global trade and navigation. Let's dive into the background of the canal. In the early 19th century, long sea routes around the African continents by the Cape of Good Hope posed a significant challenge to the trade and shipping. These routes were not only time-consuming but also labor-intensive, imposing the major restriction on global commerce. As a result, the need for shorter and more efficient trade routes became apparent. In 1854, Fundamental Day received a French engineer who had successfully built the Panama Canal, proposed a plan to construct the Suez Canal. Ismail Pasha of Egypt endured the project in 1859 and the construction command. To support the endeavor, the Suez Canal's company was a home with the backing of the French government. Fundraising activity both in French and abroad while the Swiss Canal Company issues share and attractive investment for the shareholder. Successful negotiation with Emperor Muhammad Said of Egypt towards the necessary land and labor for the canal construction. The construction of the Suez Canal began April 25, 1859. Work proceeds simultaneously from two bases, both sides on the Gulf of Suez side and Suez on the Red Sea side. French engineer and Egyptian worker collaborate on civil engineer and excavation work. Recepts introduced the latest technology in machinery. In including the use of the dynamite, which significantly increasing the speed and efficiency of the construction process. Finally, after decades of the license effort, the canal was completely in 1869. Following its completion, the administration of the Suez Canal fell into the different hands. In the period from 1869 to 1879, the Recepts Air, Suez Canal's company took the charge of the operation and management, successfully running the canal and earning profits through the canal fee and the stock dividends. However, in 1875, financial crisis hit Egypt, leading to the British intervention. Britain acquired a major stick in the Suez Canal and subsequently made Egypt protector in 1882. The British took the responsibility for the managing and the protecting the canal, paying its proceeds to the Egyptian government. The background to the Suez Canal, which erupted between 1952 and 1956, shares a right on the events lending up to the nationalization of the canal. The Egyptian Revolution in 1952 transformed the Kingdom of Egypt into a republic and the new government promotes the nationalization policy. The nationalization of the Suez Canal in 1956 symbolized Egyptian independence and sovereignty, carrying popularity for the national administration, both democracy and internationality. I would like to talk about the detail of the Suez Crisis. In 1956, the British, French, and Israeli forces invaded Egypt. It was a Suez Crisis. The military operation was a success, but it created a political storm. Thus, the three countries' armies withdrew from Egypt. Why did the Suez Crisis occur? In 1956 July, Gamal Abdel Nasser, who is an Egypt leader, announced the nationalization of the Suez Canal Company. However, Britain and Egypt had an agreement. It stated the Suez Canal Company would not transfer to Egyptian government control until 1968. So Nasser's action was not accepted by the British.
In the Suez Crisis, the British French, and Israel invaded Egypt. Why did the three countries cooperate? Because they agreed that the Nasser's action is a threat to their countries. If the Egyptian government controls the Suez company, the British and French definitely lost their interest. For the British, the Suez Passage is strategically important so they want to maintain control. In addition, France wanted to get rid of Nasser because he supported rebels who are trying to overthrow French rule in Algeria. Also, Israel decided to support the British and France. Nasser claimed his desire to destroy Israel so he was an enemy. Therefore, three countries joined the military attack. On July 27, 1956, the British began to prepare for the military attacks. The plan is that Israel would invade Sinai, distracting Nasser and allowing Britain and France to occupy the canal in peace talks. On October 29, 1956, Israeli forces took the Sinai. The British and French called for the ceasefire and the demilitarization of the canal as the United Nations Security Council. However, Nasser completely refused. So the British and France began to invade port site on November 5, 1956. The Egyptian army was defeated in a few days. However, they had to cease fire at midnight on 6 to 7 November 1956 and they had to withdraw despite its military success. Why did the British and French have to cease fire? There are two reasons. The first one is international pressure. The Soviets stated if the British and French stay in Egypt, nuclear attacks will take on London and Paris. On the other hand, the US complained that they had been not consulted the plan before despite being the traditional allies of the European powers. In addition, the US fears an escalation of the conflict and Soviet intervention. If the US supports the British side, the Soviet will be backing the Arab. It would trigger a big war. The second is financial pressure. The British financial system was strained and Britain's oil supply stopped. The British asked for a loan from the IMF, but the U.S. refused. Also, the U.S. threatened to sell the government bond holdings. It decreased bond value and Britain's foreign exchange reserves. The financial pressure caused large public protests against the conflict. Which country won the Suez crisis? Definitely, it is Egypt. The UN granted Egypt sovereignty of the Suez Canal and it reopened to shipping in April 1957. Also, Nasser became a hero in the Arab world. Israel did not win the freedom to the canal but they regained shipping rights in the state of Tehran. On the other hand, the British and France lost their influence in the area. Also, they realized that they do not have the power and influence as same as Soviet and the US. It shows that major wars in the future need American support and approval. After the Suez crisis, the size and expense of Britain's armed forces were reduced and conscription by national service was abolished. Also, France determined to acquire nuclear weapons to keep their influence without relying on the U.S.